On the back table, I put the handouts dealing with symmetry. So um, when we're, remember, that's the one I, I asked you to look at the video, but I didn't print out the handouts for you, but they're back there now. So that's the stuff on symmetry and the even, odd, or neither. Um, so let's suppose you had this function. All right, let's suppose that g of x is, is um, 5x to the fifth minus 2x cubed. And I'm telling you that, that this function is symmetric with respect to the origin. Okay, so... Now, when, when I did the key, I, I, I knew that this was an odd function, and so I, all odd functions are symmetric with respect to the origin, and so I did the key knowing that this was an odd function, but you're not always going to know this is an odd function, so, and y is not always going to be by itself. So um, the way you want to do this to determine if symmetric with respect to the origin is this. Now, in what, on that handout that's on that table, one of those pages, it tells you what to do. Who has theirs right away? The, the, the one that... The test for symmetry, this right here, that's what you're going to need. So I don't know when you look at the video, if you look at those, at those pages. Uh, those resources, but to check and see if the symmetric respect to the origin, it says replace x with negative x and y with negative y. And then if if those two equations are the same, then it's symmetric respect to the to the origin. For the y-axis, you replace x with negative x. If they're the same, then it's, it's uh, symmetric respect to the y-axis. For the x-axis, you replace y with negative y. If it's the same, then it's symmetric with respect to the x-axis. Okay? All right, so if I want to determine if this is symmetric with respect to the origin, what is it I have to do? Replace x with negative x and y with negative y. So you may want to go ahead and replace g of x as y. Write g of x as y. Now, many times the y is not going to be by itself, so that's you, you need to make sure that you're replacing y with negative y. All right, so, so I'm going to replace y with negative y, and I'm going to replace x with negative x. x to the fifth minus 2 times negative x cubed. All right, this is the first step you have to do. According to that, you had to replace x with negative x and y with negative y. Now, you have to simplify the negative x to the fifth. Well, what is negative x to the fifth the same as? Negative x to the fifth. In other words, I'm saying this. Negative x in parentheses to the fifth is the same as negative x to the fifth, like this. Okay? Because negative times a negative times a negative times a negative times a negative is a negative. So, so that becomes negative y equals a negative 5x to the fifth, right? Okay, now, what's negative x cubed? What's this right here the same as? Cubed. It's the same as this. And so I'm going to replace this. Now, be careful. That's a negative 2 times a negative x cubed. What's a negative times this negative? Positive 2x cubed. All right, so that's what you end up with. Now, you get y by itself. So how do I get y by itself? Okay, I'm going to divide the sides by negative 1. So I'm just going to go ahead and rewrite this. So negative 1, negative 1. So negative 1 divided by negative 1 is 1. I get y equals, what's a negative 5x to the fifth divided by negative 1? Positive 2. What's a positive 2 x cubed divided by negative 1? All right, now you compare that with the original. What do you notice? 
They're the same. They're equivalent. So then you say, so therefore, therefore, g of x, which equals 5x to the fifth minus 2x cubed, is symmetric about the origin. Okay? All right, then uh, let's do this this one here. Let's suppose, now there's going to be a different one, uh, a different idea. Now there's another handout that dealt with even out of neither. So, so on that one, do you have yours? Yes, 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 so that, that's why I did it this way on the key. So I'm going to have to redo the key based on not knowing that it was odd. But if, if a function is even, to see if it's even, you replace x with negative x for both of them, even and odd. Okay? And so if, if you get the original function back, then it's even. If you get the opposite of the original function, then it's odd. Okay? So, for example, suppose we had um, g of x equals um, negative 2x cubed minus 7x, or plus 7x. And then I want to know, is this function, is this an odd function? No, 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 forget about that. Because, um, all right, so no, don't, don't, don't check with, don't, do it that way. It's easier just to to replace x with what? Negative x. Okay. Um, all right. So, so I'm going to say g of negative x is equal to negative two times negative x cubed plus seven times negative x. And so g of negative x is equal again. What's negative x plus seven times cubed? times a negative 2 is a positive 2. So this becomes this, and this becomes that. Now compare that with the original. What do you notice about the original? What is about the original? OK, but what else do you notice? You have to be more specific. I understand they're not the same. The terms aren't the same. What do you notice about the terms? They're opposites. So if the terms are opposites, then the function is odd. That's what this is saying right here. This is saying, you see that negative f of x? That says that every term is the opposite of the original f of x. So if you look at this, 2x cubed, the opposite is negative 2x cubed. A negative 7x, the opposite is a positive 7x. So, so um, basically you're saying this, what you're saying um, that if I... Factor out a negative one from here. If I factor out a negative one, so this is what it's saying right here. Negative one times f of x. So if I factor out a negative one, I get negative one times a negative two x cubed is a positive two x cubed, right? And then a negative one times a positive seven x is a negative seven x. But this right here, this right here that I'm pointing to, isn't that g of x? So this becomes negative g of x. So, so basically what this is saying is that f of negative x has to equal what? Negative f of x. So the g of negative x equal negative g of x. Yes, so it's odd. So g of x is odd. You didn't have to do this part. You just have to notice that if the, if the terms are opposite of each other, then, then um, g of x is what kind of function?
uh, function. All right, so there are two things that you dealt with with this in this lesson. You dealt with symmetry and you dealt with even odd functions. So, so with even and odd, in both cases, you replace x with negative x, replace x with negative x, and then you simplify, and if, the orig if you get the original back, then it's an even function. If, if, if what you end up with is the opposite of the original, each term the opposite, then it's an odd function. Because that's what this is saying. The terms here are the opposites of these terms. Okay, now for symmetry, that's a little bit different. To check for symmetry, um, you replace, depending on whether it's, it's, if you're looking for origin, x axis or y axis, you replace either x with negative x, y with negative y, or both. Now remember, that's not on a test or, or a, uh, a final, but it is on this worksheet. So on this worksheet, you may want to look at this and do that worksheet again. Now, number two, though, wasn't, did you specifically say what it was? Okay, when did you determine whether it was even, not, or neither? So, number two, on that worksheet, on that worksheet, you replace x with what? Negative x. I mean, you're asking, guys, you're asking if it's even, not, or neither, right? So, in both cases, you replace x with what? Negative x. If what you end up with looks exactly like the original, then it's y. Then it's even. If, if each term is the opposite of the original, then it's what? Odd. If there's no relationship at all, then you say what? Neither. So, for example, if you had this, I suppose you had this. Suppose you wanted to know if, if um, g of x, which equals 2x cubed minus 7x plus 2 is even odd or neither. To determine that, you first have to replace what? Replace x with negative x. First, I get g of negative x equals 2 times negative x cubed minus 7 times negative x plus 2. Correct? So what's negative x cubed, though? Negative x cubed times 2 and then what? Negative 2x cubed. What's a negative 7 times a negative x? And then plus 2, correct? All right, now, is this... Does this look exactly like the original? No. If it did, then you would say g of x is a what? Even function. Does each term, is each term the opposite of the original? No, it's not. The 2. If the 2 wasn't there, the constant wasn't there, then it would be, right? Then you would say g of x is what? An odd function. But you have this constant there, and so each term, well, I should say all terms are not the opposite of the original. So what do you say about g of x? Okay, so, right, so uh, g of x is neither even nor odd. Okay? It's just kind of like that quadratic, when we dealt with quadratic. So if, if you have this quadratic function, all right, if you had this quadratic function, now remember, quadratic functions have symmetry. We talked about that last class period, right? What's that symmetry called? The axis of symmetry. So it has symmetry. The question is, is this quadratic function even, odd, or neither? That's a question. But to determine that, what do you replace x with? Negative x. So I get f of negative x will equal 2 times negative x squared minus 3 times negative x plus 1. What's a negative x 
times itself a positive x squared. What's a positive x squared times 2? Two? 2x two squared. What's a negative 3 times a negative x? And then plus 1. Now compare that with the original. What do you notice? So what's the answer? Neither. They're not, no, all three terms are not identical to the original. All three terms are not opposites of the original. So it's neither. So half of x is neither an even function nor an odd function. Neither even nor odd. But it still has symmetry. It's just not symmetric about the origin or the y-axis. But it still has symmetry. And that symmetry is called the axis of symmetry. We talked about that last class period. Okay, so uh, you may want to uh, redo that worksheet, worksheet 2.3, part 3, to make it look like what we just discussed. Okay, so then the other thing you need to do in test 3, now remember, when is test 2? Tuesday. All right. You may for test three, that's coming up right after that. For test three, you need to be able to also do something like this. I right, suppose f of x was taken 3x squared minus 2x plus 7. And you want to find um, the difference quotient. So since it's quadratic, this is a little bit more involved, but you need to be able to do this. So I'll give you the difference quotient. You just need to be able to use it. Okay, this is yours. You want to pick it up, Nagin? That's the, uh, the symmetry. You may want to redo number one. Okay, find the difference quotient. What's the difference? All right. Remember, um, it just measures the slope of the secant line, which you'll do next semester. So in here, you just got to be able to know how to how to compute the difference quotient. So the main work is this one right here, finding f of x plus h. So you go up to the side, and you got to figure out what f of x plus h is. That's what you got to do first. Well, according to this, how do you find f of x plus h? So, so you go to your function f, and where we see the variable x, what do you plug in? x plus h. That's what that says. So this becomes negative 3 times, and what does, do I place x with? x plus h. What am I doing to that x plus h? Squaring it. Minus 2 times, what do I place that x with? x plus, don't say x, just x plus h. And then plus 7. So that's what this is. So this is this. But then you got to simplify this. Can I distribute the negative 3? No. Can I distribute the negative 2? Yes. Okay, good. You cannot distribute the negative 3 because it's being squared. Remember, the order of operations says i got to square before I multiply. So i got to figure out what x plus h squared is. It's always going to be the same. Now, some of you may... You've done this so many times probably already that you probably already know what x plus h squared is. What trinomial is x plus h squared? There you go. So you save yourself about 30 seconds on a test. All right, so x plus h squared is x plus h times itself. And so you got to use a FOIL method. What's x times x? What's the outer? XH. XH. Now, since the binomials are the same, shouldn't the outer and the inner be the same? So if the outer is XH, then the inner also is what? XH. And then what's the last? And it combines the two middle terms. You get 2XH. So 8X squared plus 2XH plus H squared. And now you go back here, right here, and I'm, I'm going to need more room, so we can just go ahead and do that. Okay, 
So you go back right here, and you replace this with what polynomial? The one you just found, x squared plus 2xh plus a squared. Then let's go and distribute this down. What's this going to become? Okay, good. And then plus what? 7? Now go and distribute the negative 3. What do you get? Uh-huh. 3h squared, right? Okay. And you can't combine anything. Now that becomes this. So you can say equal all of this. So that's this part. This part's all of this. You see this? So that's what this is. So, um, yeah, all over h. Make sure you your state divide by h each time. So negative 3x squared minus 6x squared. I may need a little bit more room. Let me go ahead and, and do it right here. Equal. Uh, equal. So the this part here is this. Okay, just rewrite it over. All right, but I'm also subtracting what? F of x, what is f of x? This, this trinomial up here, that's what f of x is. So this right here. So you say um, minus 3x squared minus 2x plus 7. All over what? H. Okay, then what? Okay, just right, distribute the negative, correct? So I get negative three x squared minus six x a minus three h squared minus two x minus two h plus seven, and this becomes minus seven all over h. Now, if you had said plus seven, you would realize you did something wrong. But at this point, any term that does not have a factor of h, its opposite better be there. So a negative 3x squared, what do you see? Positive 3x squared. So we add them up, they cancel, you get 0. That has a factor of h, that has a factor of h, this does not. Negative 2x, do you see a positive 2x? Yep. This has a factor of h, this does not. A positive 7, you see what? Negative 7. So what is left in the numerator is this, negative 6xh minus 3h squared, minus 2h, all over what? h. It is at this point that you factor out an h. Remember last semester you talked about factoring. So what do these three terms have in common? An h. So you can factor out an h. So you get h times i. Now h times what will give me this new rating? It's negative 6x, minus 3h, minus 2, all over H, and then reduce the H's, and then what's left is your answer. So what's the answer? Right, that's the answer. So that's a difference quotient. Okay? So notice you could have messed up anywhere around here, but it's easy to have, to have checked yourself, because at this point here, things better cancel out. Okay? All right. Okay, question at this point. Right, so that's test three. Okay, so let's look at, at this. All right, suppose I'm sorry, wait, too many questions. What was the what's the first one? Oh, that's right. I forgot. I forgot it's your birthday. Yes. That was 2.2. Yeah. All right, um, so f of x equal, let's say, negative 2x squared minus 8x plus 5. 
All right, part A. Does this, now what kind of function is this? Quadratic. So the shape is, is the shape of, of what? Parabola. Okay, good. So it's a parabola. Now, is this parabola going to open up or down? It opens down. How do you know it opens down? Because A is negative. A tells you whether it opens up or down. So remember, uh, what form is this called right here? Nope. Standard form is that vertex form. That's general. So general form is what you have there. Y x squared plus B x plus C. That's general form. All right, and so A determines whether it opens up or down. If A is positive, it opens what? If A is negative, it opens down. So A here is a negative 2, correct? So since A is a negative 2, which is negative, um, the parabola will open parabola. opens down, right? Okay. B, vertex. How do you find the vertex? You use a formula. What's the formula for the vertex? How do you find the x-coordinate? Negative b over 2a. And then once you know, once you know the x-coordinate, then the other is just half of that. Okay, so that's your formula. And so in this case, it helps to denote what A, B, and C are, just like you did in section 1.5 when you solved this quadratic equation, when you solved the quadratic equation. So what's A in this case? What's B? And then what's C? Five. All right, so, so the x-coordinate of my vertex is negative B over 2A, so this says I take the opposite of B. Well, if B is a negative 8, then the opposite of that is a positive 8 over 2 times A, and A is negative 2. So that's 8 divided by A, negative 4, which is A, negative 2. So the x coordinate of my vertex is negative 2. Now, once you find the x coordinate, how do you find the y coordinate? Yeah, basically you're just finding f of negative 2, right? That's what this says. You find f of that x-coordinate. So f of negative 2. So where do we see the variable x when you plug in? Negative 2. So you're going to get negative 2 times x, which is a negative 2. Yes. Um, I'm going to try. I mean, that's, 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 a, that's about all I can do there, okay? Yes, we started last time. We're going to finish in a little while. All right. Okay, so where we see the variable x, what do you plug in? All right, so I get uh, negative 2 times negative 2 squared minus 8 times negative 2 plus 5, right? So what's negative 2 squared? 4 times a negative a, uh, 2 is a. This is a. Positive 16 plus 5, correct? And so this is 8 plus 5, which is 13. So my vertex is negative 2, 13. All right. Okay, C. Um, let's, now, remember, a quadratic function is always going to have a y-intercept. And if it's in general form, what is it going to be? Just C. All right, if it's in general form, if the equation is general form, it's just C. Now, to find the y-intercept, you're going to let x be what? Zero. Now, if it was in standard form, you would actually have to substitute zero for x. But if it's a general form, remember, the, uh, this x term goes away, this x term goes away, you're left with what? C. Um, so, so it's just 5, but all you had to do... So the y-intercept, all you have to do is replace x with uh, 0. So you get negative 2 times 0 squared minus 8 times 0 plus 5. So that's just 5. So your y-intercept is 5.
Now, they asked you to put it in order pair, and some of you are not reading your directions. So on one of the worksheets, it said, write the intercepts as ordered pairs, and you, you, some of you did not. So if they ask you to write this as an ordered pair, how do you write this? Zero, five. As an ordered pair, you read zero, five. Make sure you read the directions. Okay, now, we've got to find the x-intercept, if any. Are you going to have any x-intercepts, and how can you tell? Okay, y'all agree? She says it doesn't cross the x-axis. Okay, I, 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 I agree with, with you, not disagree. <laughs> it doesn't. Where, what do you look at? The quadrant in which the vertex is located. Where is the vertex located? A quadrant. No, not one, guys. Come on. Where's negative 213 located? <laughs> oh, my Lord, guys. Come on. I see that. you, Y'all. Yes. Negative 213 is here. Right? That's the second quadrant. What? Why y'all say? Well, I'm I'm so confused with what you're telling me. The first one. What are you talking about? The first one. Negative two. Oh. You name a quadrant. You you name. You name a quadrant counterclockwise. So it's in quadrant two. But you didn't have to know what quadrant. I know I asked you what quadrant, but did you have to know the names of those quadrants? No, you didn't have to know the name of the quadrants. You just have to know that quadrant two lied in this quadrant, whatever it's called. And what is your graph doing? Going down. So it is going to do what? Cross the x-axis. Okay? So, so I don't think it's a matter of you knowing the names of the quadrants, I think for some of you, you didn't know where that point was located. Okay, so am I going to have x-intercepts? Yes, so I've got to find them. So we're going to let, uh, let y equal zero. Now, what over here stands for y? Okay, that right here. So that means I've got to set this whole thing equal to what? Zero. So I gotta solve this this quadratic equation. Uh, negative two x squared minus eight x plus five equals zero. So I gotta solve this. So how I'm gonna solve this quadratic formula? Quadratic formula. What's a in this case? What's b? And what's c? What's the quadratic formula? Over 2a, that's quadratic formula. All right? Now, so my x intercepts are going to equal. All right, so this says I think the opposite of b. What's the opposite of b? 8 plus or minus the square root of b, which is negative 8 squared, put that in parentheses, minus 4 times a, a is negative 2 times c, which is 5, all over 2 times a, what's a? Negative 2. All right. And then this should not be an issue because you had this in that first test where you solve a quadratic equation using the quadratic formula. So you got to simplify the discriminant. So negative 8 squared is positive 64. Remember, the t squared is always positive or 0. It's never negative. Okay, a negative times a negative times a positive. Okay, 4 times 5, 40 over negative 4. So I get 8 plus or minus the square root of 104 over negative 4. Okay, now remember when you actually took the first test, you were told to simplify this if you could. All right. For, for the x-intercepts, don't worry about simplifying this. Just use your calculator to approximate these. 
because you're interested in determining where does the graph cross the x-axis. Okay, so so basically for for the first one, for the first one you're saying a plus the square root of 104 divided by what? Negative four. So you're approximating that x-intercept. And the second one you're saying a to what? Minus the square root of 104 over negative four, and you're going to approximate that. And approximate that to the nearest tenth. So in your calculator, and you probably can't see this, but in your calculator, you're going to say 8 plus the square root 104, close the parentheses, and then press equal. When I press equal, this decimal that you can't see, this, uh, this decimal represents what? Yeah, but what part of the what part of this does it represent? The numerator. That's the numerator. So now I gotta divide by, so you say divide by, and what do I divide by? Negative four. And then approximate this nearest tenth. What is one of my x uh, intercepts approximately equal to? Negative four point five. Is that correct? All right, then we do the other one. So the other one. You're going to say 8 minus the square root of 104, close the parentheses, press equal, and you get this decimal. What does that decimal represent? The numerator. But then you got to divide by what? Negative 4. And then the other x-intercept is 0 0.5, right? Okay, so those are your two x-intercepts approximated to the nearest to the nearest tenth. All right, so at this point is where you would start graphing. And so there's a graph paper up there. So, so what is the first thing I should graph? The vertex. What's the vertex? Birthday girl. Negative two what? Thirteen. Thirteen. Now, I don't have enough room, so I'm going to have to estimate this. So let's say, um, so let's say negative 213 is here. Okay. All right, so there's my vertex. What else do I know? Yeah, and how many points should, should I use? Five. Five. Five points. Okay, so far I have one. What else do I know? The y-intercept. What's the y-intercept? Okay, so right here's the y-intercept. Okay, what else do I know? My two x-intercepts. Um, 0 0.5 is is right in the middle of 0 and 1, right? And then negative 4.5 is about here, between negative 5 and negative 4. Okay, what else should I do at this point? And how do you draw your axis of symmetry? Not a line, going to the vertex, right? Okay. okay, so there's my axis of symmetry. Um, and then, so, so do you see how this x-intercept? See how it's like it's on like particular two and a half units from the axis of symmetry? So does this look like the same distance? Okay. So so every point on this side of the graph should be symmetrical to uh, the points on this side. So basically, you just take the y-intercept that you found. How many units is it from the axis symmetry? No, this one here, the y-intercept, two. So you, you reflect it about the axis symmetry, and you get this point here, right? And that distance is the same as that distance. Um, so right here. And then all you do now is just do the best, best you can with drawing your parabola. And just do the best you can. Okay. So there's there's your 
your problem. All right? And so, so what is the axis of symmetry? So the axis of symmetry, to find the axis of symmetry, what is it you need to know? And what's the vertex? And the axis of symmetry is just this x coordinate, correct? What kind of line is the axis of symmetry? Vertical, how do you name a vertical line? x equal and x equal what? Negative 2. So there's your axis of symmetry. Don't just say negative 2, you gotta say x equal negative 2. And then f was the graph, which we already did. Okay, g, what's a domain? Yeah, so so remember your 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 parabolas, your quadratic functions, either they're going up or they're going down, right? And so so regardless of whether they're going up or down, every point on that graph is gonna have an is gonna have a real number for the x coordinate. Any real number will apply. So you're actually going from negative infinity to what? Positive infinity. So one million, I'm gonna get a point in the graph, it's gonna be way down there, but I'll get a point in the graph. So, so every real number for x is going to be on, the, on this graph. That's not true for the, for the range. In this particular case, the arrows are pointing down, so my range is going from where? Neg infinity, and then it stops when y is what? 13. And um, remember, for domain and range, you're going to use brackets with numbers. Now, we always going to use parentheses with infinity, neg infinity. So this is going to be negative infinity to what? 13 with a bracket. Make sure you go from smallest to largest. Don't say 13 to negative infinity. It's negative infinity to 13 with a bracket. And then what if they ask you to determine where is it increasing, decreasing, or constant? Well, it's not constant. It's just doing increasing, decreasing. So remember, to determine the increasing, decreasing, you're going to use your domain. My domain is all real numbers, right? This dotted line divides the x-axis into how many intervals? This, this axis of symmetry divides the, the, divides the x-axis to how many intervals? Two. From negative infinity to negative two, what are my y values doing? Increasing. And then from negative two to infinity, what are my y values doing? Decreasing. So uh, increasing from negative infinity to to negative 2 and decrease from negative 2 to infinity. And remember, increase and decreasing, you're talking about open intervals. It's only domain and range that you're going to be using your bracket at this point. Okay? All right, so that was that. So we did one like this last class period. We did we did two with with uh, vertex form. So if you went here last class period, and there were probably about four or five of you, you need to get the notes from over there. And you need to look at the videos that deal with this. Okay, so this is on test three. It's on test three. All right? Okay. Any questions at this point? Yes? No, that's called general form. General form. Standard form is that vertex form. Standard form is this. That's y equals a times x minus a squared plus a. That's standard form. So I'll do another one with standard form next class period, but I need for you to start working on those worksheets with this. So I did two of these, and now I did two of these. Okay? And then there's some more in those videos if you need more you need to look at more of those. Okay. Now, let's start looking at transformations. Now, I asked.